Hey guys, JH. Okay guys, just something, to, as I say, something for something completely different. I actually did a bit of a story on this well, a number of years back, probably four years or five years ago with, with my buddy Martin Ayres. But I had a lot of videos on my site and we did a complete day where, uh, where Marty was there and Marty was uh, testing this golf club against uh, his own super fast tour burner back then. You know, like a 1945 specification to uh, to the uh, super fast Taylor burner. <clears throat> but th those videos I had on my site then got hacked, and I lost them all. So I just found this yesterday in my uh, in my garage, and I thought, oh look, I'll do it again for guys because maybe a lot of the guys wouldn't have seen it. Guys, this is a remarkably special golf club. This is actually this was actually Ben Hogan's. This was Ben Hogan's personal property. And he made this golf club up for a member of Colonial, a friend of his. And somebody I know got it off the guy's brother a number of years ago, 20 years ago. And we've had it ever since. And this is, it's a McGregor 693 uh, head. Um, it was one of Hogan's personal golf clubs. And, I, and I'll show you here, if you look at, th this is what they call the branding iron. That, that name on the top there is actually impressed into the golf club with like a branding iron. And that was the signature clubs for Hogan and Byron Nelson from McGregor. This is the golf club. That's it. The back way. Beautiful piece of gear, this. Okay, now this golf club... This golf club hasn't got the original shaft in it because when Hogan made it up um, for the member, he took his shaft out of it uh, because clearly it would have been too stiff for the member. So this is just a normal, one of the old um, steel um, dynamic shafts. Hogan used to use the McGregor Propel multi-step and it was like, <laughs> like a triple X golf club. It was just so stiff. Uh, but that guy couldn't have swung that, the, the member. And of course Hogan's drivers all used to be black painted and the guy didn't like the black paint so Hogan uh, redid this club for him and this is a beautiful uh, natural persimmon lacquered um, you know, light brown honey colour. So it's a, but it was actually Hogan's personal stock piece of gear. And when Marty, Martin Ayres, because Marty was just a Hogan nut, he couldn't believe this golf club. And these were 170 cc's guys, today's clubs are 460. And of course I remember I had these golf clubs, the McGregor 693's. This, well they call that the swept back sole plate. And what I, what I didn't realise with these golf clubs is because they're solid and they've got entirely different centres of gravity and they've got, you know, very recessed um, longitudinal uh, centers of gravity and with that brass back weight as well they've got that old piece of lead that's in there as a, as a lead back weight uh, they used to hit the ball so low and run the ball and when Martin Ayers tested this and Marty's like 120 mile an hour swing speed and we tested this golf club with the old 1980s I had a couple of dozen brand new of the 1980 uh, Ballada tightless balls and um, and we tested the golf club hitting the Ballada balls with this and hitting Marty's club with the new ball and the crazy thing was that Marty actually hit this about five yards further than his club now this is a this is this this club here is um, this particular one 43 and a half inches long uh, I think Hogan, Hogan had a 44 inch. He was one of the first guys to go to longer golf club. But of course the member, uh, the member wasn't strong enough to, to swing that golf club at the extended swing weight. So it's 43 and a half. And Marty hit this golf club five yards longer than his, his Taylor uh, super fast burner. And it was because this hits the ball so much lower and ran further. This was getting on the ground, you know, 30 yards. Um, earlier than his super fast and was going half the height of his super fast but it ran for like 40 yards it was unbelievable how far it ran 
And when I think back in the old days in the golf courses that we played and the holes I used to play and with this golf club, uh, how flat the ball used to go and how far I used to run the ball. I find these days I don't run the ball at all with the modern, modern drivers of today. But there it is guys, that was actually the great man's golf club and he's hit, hit shots with it. My buddy bought it off the brother or the son or somebody that, uh, uh, of the guy that Hogan made it for and he paid a lot of money for it. He bought it in the late 70s in, um, in the US off a guy and he paid like, I think he paid a couple of grand for it back then because it was such a valuable golf club. And uh, <clears throat> it's been basically authenticated. I showed it to Norman von Neider uh, years and years and years ago. And of course Norman played with Hogan and he played the same golf clubs as Hogan. He played the McGregor drivers. He looked at that as soon as he saw it. He said, yeah, that's a Hogan head. That was one of Ben's head. He said, I could just absolutely see that. He said, the way, the, way, the way Ben used to just tow, uh, just, just roll the toe off and um, very little loft on it. This, this thing would be lucky to have <coughs> probably eight degrees of loft on it. Uh, and the way it's bored, the Hogan used to go through lots and lots of heads just to get the right boring because he wanted the head flatter. And of course these golf clubs compared to standard golf clubs, guys, this, this, this golf club is 54 degrees. 54 degrees light. Today's golf clubs, no sorry, 53 degrees light. Today's golf clubs are 60, 61. And of course that's the lie, right there. And of course that suited Hogan beautifully with his golf swing. Now when I hit this, this, this golf club, and particularly with the, with the older, softer balls, it's just the most beautiful feeling. And it, um, and it goes fantastic. I haven't had any swings today, not one. And I'm stiff, I, I actually hurt my my back last night in the, or the shoulder in the back in the gym and um, I haven't had a swing to warm up so I really shouldn't hit this club but I just want to hit it just to, just to show you the great man has had this in his hand, he's hit shots with it it's a pity it hasn't got the original sharp but of course that guy couldn't have played with that sharp but Hogan built the club and um, very rare bit of gear and when you see this and you saw the scores and the flight and the way that they could hit the golf ball just amazing now I'm not used to teeing the ball down anymore because of the big face drivers so I might whiff this oh oh I don't think I can swing guys my back whoa And it's got a really old slick grip on it. It's the original grip. It was the first of the the Golf Pride swing right cords. Not the original cords that Hogan had, because Hogan had those original cords which were, which were different to this. <clears throat> anyway, we'll try and hit it. Try and hit it. Try and hit it with a little Hogan fade feels so different in balance guys you can really the head just feels like it's just there because it's a solid head okay this is something you shouldn't do there you are, guys there you are, guys beautiful Hogan fade maybe it's got the spirit of Ben in there it didn't even feel even with his range ball it didn't even feel that come off the face I'll just hit a uh, I've got a, uh, a ballada ball here. I'll just hit it. Now, that's amazing when I say it's got the spirit of Hogan in it with the fade. I knew I was going to fade that. I mean, it's just a bullet fade. It just goes dead straight. Just peels off. Yeah, here's a ballada. Wow. Wow. 
Wow. <laughs> That's amazing, guys. Just a little gentle, wispy fade. That's a bullet. Wow, that is a bullet. It's a different feel, guys. I could play with this, but I won't take it down the course because it's so valuable. It's such a historical relic. But it's amazing. As soon as I pick it up, I feel like I want to fade it. Because the face is sitting open, the flat lie, everything is set up to fade the ball. And of course, Jack. Jack used just this driver, the 693. They all did. Miller, everybody used that club in the old days. <clears throat> that was the club. That was the Tommy Armour. 693 swept back. But that branding iron um, <clears throat> impregnation of the, of the name in there. All right, see if we can just put a good swing on it. Guys, guys, they don't make golf clubs like this, clearly. You know what I would like to do if I was a multi squad zillionaire? I'd like to build a golf course, the clubhouse with members, and get a couple of hundred sets of these type of golf clubs remanufactured. And when you join the club, you have to buy a set of the clubs, it might cost you a couple of grand or something, and that's what we play with at that golf club. Traditional golf clubs, traditional irons, and I would get the manufacturer, Japanese manufacturer, to make us the old Ballada type balls, or a very, very soft golf ball that doesn't blow the face out of these clubs. Because <clears throat> that is the best feel that I can remember ever having off the face of a driver, and that is not short. Sure, they go low, and when they hit the ground, it's like a, a jackrabbit. There's another one. So guys, they're all in the same place. Exactly the same place. And they run. They run like... They do. They run like a jackrabbit. I haven't seen run on a driver you know, for 25 years. Or, or longer and since I stopped using wooden golf clubs. Now this is 43 and a half. It's just a, the old 31 pound dynamic shaft, which was the stiff. And that's what it is. But they're just dead flush centre, every one of them. Wow. See, that's a burner. Absolute burner. I just thought I'd, I'd do it, guys. I just had some time here today and, and I found it in the garage this morning. I thought, wow, I need another one of those Bellatus. These are worth, I'll go out and get those off the range after so I won't lose them. But the bladder on this guy, wow. it's just, that's the thing we don't realise is the feel. See that ball's, that ball's 30 yards long from the range. Ball. That's, I've got to tell you, no exaggeration, guys, that's probably the best flight. I've ever seen on a driver for 25, 30 years. Never had that flight. You can't get that flight with these golf clubs. Can't get that flight. There it is. 170cc head. I'll give you another look at it. Those guys. The aficionados out there. Look at that. McGregor. Face. There it is. There's the Hogan imprint. Byron Nelson had one exactly the same. And there's the lead back weight, which is starting to, because the head's just swelled a little bit and the back weight's starting to come out a little bit. But that's what gives it the solid feel, guys. Got to hit another one. Hit another one of those Bellatas. But wouldn't that be a treat, guys, to have a club, have an exclusive membership, 
we all play with these types of woods and the old irons, the old Tommy Armour type irons, the old McGregor irons, the old colour chromes. Now I've got to tell you, hang on, what I'll do is I'll hit my driver, which is actually uh, Justin Rose's old slider driver, and this has got the, the tour issue V2 shaft in it. This is a very low spin golf club, but I bet it won't be anywhere near the low spin that that club was. Now I, I can see those other balls up there. Um, I'll hit this one. This just doesn't feel like the same club. the other clubs got it this didn't carry this carried uh, further but it came down to around about 10 yards there that's running about 35 maybe 40 yards boy that was a nice feel though come on let's just hit one more let's just hit a couple more guys I'll tell you what when you got this in your hand I mean I feel pretty special I feel pretty privileged very privileged. I'll tee this down a bit lower. I feel very privileged. And I tell you what, though, the spirit of Hogan's in it. I mean, I'm just hitting absolute bullet fades. Bullet fades. Yeah, now I hit that great. Now I know where the other one went. That landed about 30 behind the other one and ran up. Just past it. And that's with this range ball. I tried to uh, hit that a bit lower on the club. Tried to give that what we call, Mo Norman used to call, a cultivated top. Okay, we'll really bust this one. Gonna hit the now I'm warmed up. I'll just bust this. Can't hit it better than that. You've never hit it better than that, JH. You've never hit the ball better than that ever in your life. And you've never had that feel off a golf club. Now guys, Ben Hogan's personal property. What would it be worth today? It doesn't belong to me, it belongs to my buddy and I thought I'd given it back to him. And it was sitting in my garage, I cleaned out my garage yesterday and there it was. I thought I'd given it back to him. But it was authenticated by Von Nida. Von Nida said, yep, absolutely, as one of Hogan's clubs. He said, hey, he built them that way. One more. Let's see if we can really pump one out there. See if I can hit it a long way. Roll it. Pretty golf shot. Okay guys, just a bit of bit of nostalgia, a bit of history. And to have almost a religious relic of golf in my hands. It's an artifact. It's not a golf club, it's an artifact. Anyway guys, that's Hogan's personal driver. And it goes unbelievably good. I might ring up Bill Gates and say, Bill, you got a spare 30 mil, I'm gonna to put together a golf course and we're gonna change the whole attitude towards golf. We're gonna go back to real golf to the real persona of golf, the real feel of golf. I'm going to build a golf course, I'll build it in America. I'll go and live there. And we'll get these clubs made, all replicas, the whole box and dice. I'll have a talk to Bill. Or Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett plays, he's a member of Augusta. He's got plenty to do. Oh, you need about 30 mil. What a good idea. Okay, guys, that's it, the artifact. I'm sorry, Ben. I shouldn't have dropped that on the ground. I mean, that's sacrilegious. Okay, guys, just a bit of fun. We did that a couple of years ago with Marty, about six years ago, and I lost the video, so it's back. I hope you enjoyed that. I did.